So the question is, what are the things we can do going forward? There are some solutions that we've offered here. It's going to be very, very difficult. I don't think anything is going to solve this problem without a bipartisan solution, particularly when you have a Republican speaker, a Democratic majority leader, and a Democratic president. And you know, in the 90s, we saw some of the good numbers. The Republican Congress and a Democratic president, uh, they did welfare reform, they did all sorts of reform that both sides said wasn't right. But somehow they got it done. So my hope is that this new Congress uh, and, this, and this president, we can put down the rhetoric, we can stop talking about birth certificates, we can stop talking about all these things, we can talk about how do we solve the problems facing this country, given the context of the mistakes that both parties have made in leadership in the past. So, but I do appreciate the question. Thank you. So we had this general over here. Um, here's my concern. Um, I was born and raised a good Christian. And my Jesus says, you heal the sick. You feed the hungry. And when you do this to the least of them, you're doing it to me. And yet, and yet what we see from the Ryan bill is something that, uh, from the, the budget that he's proposed, is something that's not going to do any of that. And it, it will hurt Medicare folks like me who are going to be headed toward Medicare. And then it's going to be giving vouchers. Excuse me, I lost my job two and a half years ago. I lost my health insurance. No one will insure me today. I, I, I would do that if I could. I get rejected. So how is it going to help me that you're going to give me some voucher for $3,000 when I can't even, uh, the only people who will insure me today are the state of Kansas and they want $900 a month. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of money. And, and we do need to start somewhere. But Congressman, explain to me why we have to uh, only take money away from the elderly and the sick and the people who are hurting and not AARP magazine came out last week with an article that said GE, Exxon, Bank of America, none of these are paying any substantial amounts of taxes. We have to also look at the income and we we bring our voice home and we can cut the sense of the spend. So I want to understand Sure. It doesn't sound like you're balanced. Sure, and that's a there's a lot of things. Right? I, might work backwards. I might work backwards a little bit here, and then uh, first of all, on the uh, tax tax reform, uh, on the tax reform, um, I think we absolutely need tax reform. I think it's wrong that some of these corporations are paying taxes. They need to pay their fair share, and so I think this is another source of bipartisanship. The president called for to stay the union address that he called for actually lowering the corporate tax rate. So it's 35% now, it's the second highest in the, in the world. That's not competitive. We need, in the present call said, let's lower the rate, but let's flatten it out and make sure everybody pays for it. And that, was a, that was his principle in the statement. So I think there's a, there's a chance there where the parties could come together and figure out a way to do tax reform. And that's, that's a real opportunity, I think, for us to actually get something done. And that's the whole thing, is we've got to get something done in, in Washington. And that means we're going to have to give and take. And we're going to have to work together. So I think that's one where the parties can work together. Uh, Medicare, the Medicare plan is a little different than what you described, and I understand that there's that there may be frustration with whatever it is, but the plan is, doesn't give you a voucher and send you out to the private market. It puts you in a similar situation that the federal employees have, which is when there are four or five or six different plans, or maybe more, you could choose from, and you receive premium assistance to go into one of those plans. There, you will get a plan. You're required to have, uh, they're, they're going to be required, those will offer a plan. And if you have a pre-existing condition, or you pay, uh, or you have your lower income, then you'll have, then you'll, have, then you'll have, you'll have more premium assistance. It's a means-tested plan where the poor pay pay less, the richer pay more. Uh, but I do agree with you. I think we have to figure out a way to preserve Medicare. I think we have to figure out a way to uh, to to uh, provide it for generations going forward. And both parties agree that the way it's going right now, it cannot continue to work. The president has a proposal. His proposal involves a 15-person board that goes in and tries to cut costs through government, uh, through government mandates, through government fiat. I personally don't think that'll work. I know others do. Maybe people in this room, that's fine. But I think trying to invoke competition in the system and trying to find a way in which we can have insurance companies competing uh, in that regard for that will do a better job wow. than yeah, having the government. Yeah. 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 And this is the healthcare debate. Well, 
You would be in front of a Medicare post. What kind of tea do you have? I'm not me. I'm always in the board. We'll go back to board. We're having a lot of Yes, sir. I have an extremely small business that's on the other side of Dependent on discretionary spending of individuals. Lately, I've almost had a non existent business. As a result of that, I'm almost entirely dependent on Social Security. And for me, that means I'm going to be entirely dependent on Medicare, Medicaid, and things like that. I would much rather have a business that is flourishing, but it can't flourish in this economy. I, in my mind, I think. It would make a difference if the government would get out of the business of running everything. Thank you. You know, defend the country of well, those basic things to do. I need government out of our lives so that people can earn money, express their own entrepreneurial ability, have money to do. They can end up giving me something, and, and my business could do well. And then, and then I, well, I'll do one more step. If I were able to earn money by my business, I wouldn't need so much from Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. I need a better business, and I need government help. Well, I appreciate your comment. Certainly, I think I've espoused what I, I believe is a free enterprise system, that the idea of an entrepreneur, uh, and someone like yourself or someone else in this room who takes risks and builds a business, that that's where job creation is going to happen in this country. You know, folks have come out, so this, uh, this uh, my family came out here generations ago. People came out, they built something out of nothing. They, they plowed the ground, they built a way of life for themselves. And so the best way to get out of this is going to be to create an environment in which hard work is rewarded, in which we have an environment where jobs can be created, and the economy can grow. Because the one thing we can all agree on is that we can grow the economy that is the quickest, the best way to solve these problems, is to put people back to work again. That ought to be another bipartisan trend, which is we can grow the economy, put people back to work, but that's the best way to get this thing going. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first off, let's go forward. From this time on, let's go forward. Let's quit talking about the past. <laughs> 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 first off, this is about uh, the, uh, I mean, you said in that thing about HR